In the last video, we spoke about angular momentum of a charged particle and the effect of an inhomogeneous magnetic field on the dipole. Moving on to the actual stern gerlach experiment. The experiment was conducted with a collimated beam of vaporized silver atoms passed through an inhomogeneous magnetic field. The silver atom has 47 electrons. An electron has both spin angular momentum and orbital angular momentum, as we discussed in the previous video. The total angular momentum is the sum of both these components. Thus we see there is a momentum imparted due to the orbit as well as spin. Hence the resultant momenta of the 47 electrons will dictate the magnetic moment of the silver atom. However, 46 of the electrons cancel each other's spin and orbital angular momentum out. The nucleus too has negligible influence over the magnetic moment of the atom due to its much larger mass compared to the electron. Thus, only the 47th electron contributes to the angular momentum of the silver atom. And since the 47th electron has zero orbital angular momentum, we are in effect measuring the spin angular momentum of the 47th electron in the stern gerlach experiment. Yet another consideration here is to have the atom neutral in charge, which silver atom already has. This is necessary because otherwise the particle would become subject to Lorentz forces as shown in the picture from Wikipedia. It would cause the positive and negative charges to curve in the magnetic field which is not desirable in this experiment. We want it to only deflect due to the magnetic dipole of the electron. As we studied in the previous video, the magnetic moment of a particle is mu equals gq over 2mc into s, where s is a spin angular momentum. In the case of an electron, the magnetic moment in the z direction is mu z equals minus e over me, me which is the mass of an electron, into c into sz. Due to the minus sign of the negative charge, the direction of the magnetic moment is opposite to the direction of the spin angular momentum. The spin of the angular momentum will determine the direction of the magnetic dipole. Thus, inside an inhomogeneous magnetic field, the atom will deflect towards the direction of mu z, but the downward deflected atoms will have their angular momentum upwards. Similarly, the upwards deflected atoms will have their angular momentum downwards as we discussed a while ago. In addition to that, the arrangement of poles of the magnets do not matter. What matters is only the magnetic field gradient. Thus, the vector mu will always move from low to high magnetic field in density, irrespective of the arrangement of the poles. Now coming to the schematic of the stern gerlach device. This device has an oven, collimators, magnets and a detector. A collimated beam of vaporized silver atoms are passed through the magnetic arrangement which has a pointed magnet at the top and a flat magnet in the bottom. The magnet arrangement produces an inhomogeneous magnetic field with a positive magnetic field gradient in the z direction. Thus the north of the magnetic dipole will be pushed up or down depending on the orientation of the pole. Before the experiment, it was thought that the 47th electron in the silver atom would have a continuum of values of the magnetic moment mu z from positive to negative as we shall see here. This was a false assumption. In reality, we see that the atoms once they enter the magnetic field, split into only two values of mu z instead of the continuum of values assumed previously. The two values are minus h bar by 2 
directed upwards and plus h bar by 2 directed downwards. The orientation of the magnetic dipole taken when the atoms enter into the magnetic field cannot be predicted beforehand as they seem to randomly hit the screen in the up or down location. This is typical quantum behavior. Also measuring the momentum in the z direction destroys information of its spin in the x and y direction, which is yet another quantum behavior. Though in the animation we see that there are an equal number of particles deposited on the top and bottom, this might not be the case generally. The up angular momentum is called spin up and the down angular momentum is called spin down. h bar is the Planck's constant h divided by 2 pi. These values of the angular momentum are characteristic of a spin half particle. If you want to know more about the history and the derivation of the Planck's constant h, you can have a look at the previous videos in this series. In the next video, we will continue with further experiments on stern galag devices that will tell us about the structure of quantum mechanics. See you in the next video.